All right. What we've got here is we've got a. Um, we're going to do the journal entries for a purchase, a purchase return, a sale, a sales return, and we're going to include discounts in there as well. So first things first, we're going to do it from the purchaser's point of view. So we're going to return purchase and inventory. So on the 5th of May, Sork Audio receive an invoice from PW Audio for 3,800. Now that word there, invoice, indicates to me that it's going to be accounts payable. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase our inventory by 3,800. And I do that by putting a debit to inventory of 3,800. And then I've got accounts payable. of 3,800 as well. Now that's the purchase, but what happens later is that Sork returns some goods costing $300 to PW Audio on the 8th of May. So a couple of days later, they return the audio, uh, some goods. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a reverse of this. So I've got to decrease in and decrease accounts payable, and I decrease it through just doing the uh, entries in the reverse order. So my accounts payable now is a debit, which is a reduction to a liability of 300 and my inventory is a credit of 300 which is a reduction to my inventory now the next thing that happens is I record freight now freight in or out it doesn't really matter our expense account is freight I'll just put it in or out some companies have freight in and a freight out account and it's for $150. All right. Now, it indicates that we've paid it, so it's not an invoice, it's paid, so that then means that it's going to be a reduction of my cash or a credit to my cash account of $150. So we've got purchase, purchase return and my freight. We're now going to settle the account. So we're going to do a settlement of the account, first being within the discount period, so it's going to be a purchase with discounts and then we're going to do it outside the discount period. So in the discount period, outside the discount period. Now Sork, um, we're going to pay the balance. We had a, an amount of $3,800 and we returned $300 so that leaves us with $3,500. If I do the settlement calculation, it's $70 which is 2% of our um, outstanding. So what I now need to do is um, I'm going to pay some, uh, receive some cash or pay some cash now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse my accounts payable for 3500 When I say reverse, I'm going to debit my accounts payable for 3500 My discount received is a new account that I've got at the moment, and that's for $70. That means that my cash payment then is for 3430 so that's within the discount period. Now it doesn't look too different if I go outside the discount period. What I lose is that discount received account. I'm still going to reduce my accounts payable down to nil or debit it by 3,500. So if the balance of my account was 3,500 and I put a, an amount through and my cash is 3,500. So that gives me my purchase, purchase returns, um, purchase return, uh, purchase settlement with discount and purchase settlement without discount. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing but this time from the seller's point of view. So we're going to do a cash sale and a credit sale. So my cash sale is going to be here, my credit sale is going to be here but this time it's from the seller's point of view, not the purchaser's point of view. So let's have a look. We've got PW Audio makes a cash sale of 2200 and the cost of the goods sold was 1400 So the entries that I need to put into my account are as follows. First things first, I receive the cash. So I've got my cash, which is a debit or an increase to my cash account, 2200 And I've got sales revenue of 2200 as well. The other bit is the cost or the inventory side of the thing, um, the entry. So I'm going to recognise my expense is a cost of sale, or sometimes called cost of goods sold, for 1,400, and it's a reduction to my inventory of 1,400 as well.
Now that was the cash sale, so this one's the credit sale. Now the entry doesn't look too different, but this cash account is now um, and no longer, it's an accounts, part, accounts receivable. And this time it's for 3,800 and the goods cost 2,400. So this is that sale that we just had to Sork Stereo. And my sales revenue is 3,800 as well. So once again, we have to put in cost of sale, which is, uh, what is it, 2,400. And my inventory reduction or credit of 2,400. And that gives me my cash sale and my credit sale. So let's do some uh, returns now and then we'll do a payment. Uh, my returns, PW Audio uh, records a credit for return goods which is $300 to Sork Stereo, uh, to Sork Stereo. they are not faulty or damaged, so when it says it's not faulty or damaged that indicates to me it's going to go back into inventory and it's for $140. So my entry becomes sales returns and allowance, now businesses like to document how much returns they have so this is a good way to do it by creating an account and um, I'm going to reduce my accounts receivable by the same amount $300. Now this section down here is for the return of the goods into inventory. I'm going to increase my inventory because that's where I'm putting the goods back to and that's for 140 but I'm going to have to reduce my cost of sales because these weren't sold of 140. So that's the sales return. Last thing we're going to look at now is the discount. So my sales discount is that a PW, uh, the entry by PW Audio to record a cash receipt on the 12th of May from Sork Stereo. So, and it's within the discount period. So that indicates to me that we're going to have to calculate a discount. Now it's 2%, so I've got 3,500 being the 3,800 less this return here times 2% equals $70. So that's the bit I know. So first thing, I'm going to receive some cash, so my cash account's going to increase, and it's going to be for 3,430, which is the cash that I received, 3, 4, 3A. The discount I allow is that 70 that we calculated just there. And the difference, uh, oops, hang on, sorry, that 70 is on the wrong side. And then my accounts receivable for the full amount of $3,500. Uh, which zeroes my accounts receivable down to, which zeroes my accounts receivable, full stop.